In this video, we're going to look at the process of moving a paint object to the sculpt workspace to make some sculpting edits there and then get a quick update to our normal maps back here in the paint workspace. The first thing you may notice is that this paint object is not visible in the sculpt workspace. When you import a model into this workspace, the object type is changed dramatically, if not entirely. What I mean by that is if you stay in surface mode, which is one of the modes that you can work in, it's going to be a triangulated mesh and you have a lot of tools in surface mode that utilize dynamic tessellation. Also, if you convert it to voxels, it's a completely different paradigm. So that's the main reason why it's just not designed to work on low polygon UV mapped models here. However, that's not to say that we can't get a copy of the paint object into this workspace. If you wanted to make some modest sculpting edits to your paint object, you could use your paint layers with the depth channel enabled with your different brushes, maybe the fill brush and so on, but you don't have the breadth of tools available to you that you have in the sculpt workspace. You do have some basic sculpting tools here in the tweak room to tweak your paint mesh. You also happen to have some basic transform tools as well, gradient selections and so on. But as you can see, they're rather modest. So what we're gonna do is look at the two different options that are available. One is we can go to the baked menu and choose paint mesh to sculpt mesh. If we choose this one, we're going to be basically in the import dialog or the import tool and we'll see a preview of our object. Let's just go ahead and click on that. If I choose the first option, it's going to send it as is and have us set up and ready to go. But the second option allows us to use the import tool to subdivide the object as many times as needed before we commit it to a layer. Because I have this beard, I don't want to really go any further, so I'll just go ahead and click Apply. I can step out and I can see that it separated all the individual objects into their own layers here. So I'm going to delete that beard and the fingernails too. I don't need them. Let me subdivide this model one more time, maybe a second time. There we go. I'll turn my frame off. I'll do something like this. Don't have quite enough resolution. So maybe skin. It's going to use live clay tools here. Let's reduce my brush size. Let's try another one here. I'm going to undo a few times. I'll just use the pinch brush. can use crease clay instead. All right, so again, we've made very slight surface changes. We could continue doing this, but I just wanted to do a very quick test. Now we can go back to the paint workspace and I'm gonna hide the beard or just delete it for now. I don't necessarily need it at this point. Let's go ahead and bake everything down. Before I go any further though, I just want to mention in the Vox Tree Layer panel, you'll see that we have this body layer. I either need to change the name here or change it here because if it has the same name, 3D Coat when baking is going to try and bake this to the same layer or the one that's named the same. Let's double click this one. I can name it Skin. I may also want to keep 3D Coat from overriding this current normal map during the baking process. To do that, I need to change the blending mode to something besides normal map, such as the standard blending mode. And I'll just click on the visibility icon to hide that layer for now. 
Now we are ready to proceed and go to the bake menu and choose bake sculpt mesh onto paint mesh. If you hover over this, it explains that it's going to use this instead of the retopple mesh to bake to. So again, I'll click that. We'll get the bake scan settings dialog here. I'm going to adjust it a bit, looking at the outer shell. We want it to be about as close as possible without any voxel objects poking through. And let's look at the inner shell. We don't want any of the inner shell poking through the voxel object either. So let's scrub that until we see very little of it, if any. That looks good. If I need to make some localized edits with my brush, I can do that. It's going to pull along the normal, whether you're on the inner shell or outer shell. The inner shell, the normals will be facing inwardly. And the outer shell, the normals will be facing outward. So just keep that in mind. That's why this tool is probably what you want to use most of the time. If you want to switch to this on the fly, this other option where you're pushing in instead of pulling, then you can hold down the control key and it will invert the action. This will allow you to relax and this one will flatten. You can save and reload later, reset it to its default and so on. The inner shell does have a toggle ghosting, but right now I have the paint object showing, so it's kind of getting in my way. I'll just go ahead and hit OK. When it's done calculating, it's going to switch us back to the paint workspace automatically. And then I need to go to the view menu and uncheck show voxels in paint room. And we have our baked result, including an additional normal map. Now let me go ahead and hide the skin layer. We can see those changes we made in the scope workspace reflected in this normal map. So I'm going to go back to this one, unhide it, and I'll change it back to normal map. We can always adjust our depth opacity. And enable that one. You can see how it's blending with it. So that's the first technique. In the next video, what we're going to do is look at a different method that will allow us to make broader changes to the shape of the model or portions of the model. Because if we were to maybe go in and accentuate the cheekbones, make them larger or bigger jaw bones and whatnot, the vertices of the sculpt mesh will be displaced too far away from those of the paint mesh. And that's going to give us baking errors. So again, in the next video, we're going to look at how we would approach it if we needed to make more drastic changes. Okay, so stay tuned and we'll see you then.